Now, we've been talking this morning about long COVID, which is all a bit of a mystery. People seem to have different symptoms and, and no one can quite get to the bottom of it. Well, one person who is really suffering is children's author Michael Rosen, who can join us now. It's good to see you this morning. Uh, I know you, you actually had a really rough time with COVID, didn't you, actually, in the, in the initial stages? Yes, that's right. I was in intensive care for 47, 48 days. I was in a coma for about 40 of those. Um, so it, it hit me really badly, yes. And so coming out of that now, when hopefully people think, well, maybe you'd, you'd, you'd find some sense of recovery, you, again, this long COVID issue has really affected you. Well, what sort of symptoms are you showing with that? Well, uh, because I got microbleeds in my brain, it knocked out my... Uh, left eye and left ear, um, and it seems as if uh, the COVID virus can attack what are called the peripheral nervous system, the edges of ourselves, if you like. So I've got numb toes and I get dizziness quite often. The blood clots, which are also caused by COVID, have cleared up, it seems, in my brain and in my lungs. Um, and then there's a general fatigue because it's thought that the virus, now one of the thoughts, every cell has got a little thing that they call the powerhouse of the cell, the mitochondrion, and they think it probably somehow or other attacks that. That's the little bit in your cell that turns the food into energy. So that seems to be one of the reasons why there's so many symptoms. So where has this left you in terms of, of trying to get on with life? Uh, well, I'm adapting to the fact that I can hardly see, so I can't really see you looking at my screen there. Um, this year, I have a hearing aid, which sort of gives me a bit of 3D sound, but it's it's quite strange. It sounds as if I'm always listening to the radio, which, as it happens, I do radio, so it's kind of rather odd. It sounds as if I'm on the radio to myself all the time. And the, the numb toes are more of an irritant than a sort of, you know, a disability or anything like that, but it, it is kind of annoying, um, particularly if I'm walking around in slippers and so on, because uh, it just it, it, it sort of bothers me. But it's the dizziness that it surprises me because sometimes um, my wife, Emma, she sort of notices I kind of stagger against the wall or suddenly grab the table. So that's a bit worrying if I'm out. Well, what has happened in terms of, I mean, in getting a diagnosis for this and... and the potential for any sort of treatment? Because, I mean, with all this, we know people are presenting different, perhaps similar, but still different uh, uh, responses to long COVID. I mean, it's, it, it does seem that, that getting any sort of, of actual treatment is, is extremely difficult. Well, I think we're coming into the category of what people call post-viral syndrome, so that it's known that viruses of various kinds um, can have two, four, five, ten, twenty years effect. People talk about ME, obviously, and it's it's not imaginary. So you know, people are saying, well, some of it we just have to live with. People um, who are suffering severe, severe fatigue. Also, other people are suffering what they're calling brain fog. I think I did get that in the first months after I came out of intensive care. I was getting memory loss and, and getting muddled and fuzzy if there was, as it were, too much information coming at me. Uh, there are now some long COVID clinics. Um, I suspect there are some people, uh, well, I'm, I belong to a long COVID group on Facebook. Uh, other social medias are available. Um, that. Um, we join and we share some of these, and I can see some people in severe difficulty about literally getting up. Some days they can, some days they can't. I call it alternate day syndrome. I sort of, if I over-exercise one day, and I do try to exercise a bit every day, then I kind of, whew, I get a kind of bout of, of being able to do virtually nothing for a few hours the next day. What is your message then? I mean, obviously, some people are, are, are trying to get treatment and there is talk now that these long COVID clinics are going to have to be around for a lot longer than was initially planned. Um, but is there a sense, I mean, with the Facebook groups and all the rest of it, is there a sense that just being able to connect with people who are suffering in a similar way, does, does that help? Is there a sense of community and mutual support there? There is. I mean, when I put up the fact that I was getting these bouts of dizziness, up came another whole set of posts of people saying, oh, me too, me too. And then again, I posted up some of the latest stuff that seems to be 
pointing at the, the mitochondria and that somehow or other the virus is getting into the mitochondria. Um, and again, a huge, great wave of, of posts. Some people are putting up what they find useful, you know, vitamins or uh, other things. And the moment that people are experimenting with that and the attitude to exercise is little and often rather than trying to do kind of great big bouts of exercise for you know, a couple of hours one day and doing nothing for a few days, but doing little and often, and I find that a, a, a useful recommendation. But where there are things like severe skin rashes and so on, I, I get mild skin rash, um, then, uh, you know, the GP and some medication is, is necessary. Uh, but the fatigue, you know, there's not much you can do about it, but it's actually people younger than me who are trying to get into work five days a week I mean, some of it's being, if you like, disguised because of um, lockdowns and so on and people working from home. But there are a lot of people out there who couldn't, uh, if there was full ordinary working conditions, wouldn't be able to work for five days a week. It's just, you know, 40 hours. It's too much. Mm -hmm. Well, look, we really appreciate you sharing your experiences with us, Michael. Good to see you, as always. Thank you.